Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah. This is the holiday season. I've got a lot of tips for you, and this is Senior Issues, etc. I'm your host, Vita Verdon. I've got a good show for you. Hurry up, get your coffee, get your 7-Up, come and sit down, bring a pencil with you, get off the couch, hurry up, get ready for it. I got two good-looking guys with me today, and you know who they are? That's the Sheriff's Department of Lake County, Illinois, and they're going to let us in on the scoop about themselves and some good tips for this holiday season. So I want to give a warm welcome to our very distinguished Sheriff, Mark Curran, Jr. Nice yeah. to have you. And Roman uh, Bushberger, he is the Deputy Sheriff, and they're going to tell us about themselves. They're going to tell us what the Sheriff's Department does, and they're going to give us some good tips. So I think we'll start with you, Sheriff. And I want everyone to notice how I think it's so cool, that badge. Is that made out of leather? The backdrop is, yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Well, first of all, uh, I've had the audience a long time, so we become really good friends. And what they like to know is a little bit about you. And so if you just look right in that camera and tell them a little bit about yourself and if you have a significant other or a pet or something you want to blow a kiss to. And we <laughs> don't give sissy kisses. We give smackaroonies right. on this show, okay? Well, um, I have uh, been married almost 20 years, 19 years. And uh, my wife is Irene, she's an attorney. Uh, I have three boys. Mark, he's a senior at Carmel High School. Uh, he's a big football star this past season. Uh, he's 17. George, my middle son, is 15. He just had knee surgery, so he's recovering from uh, his knee surgery. So I would just ask the listeners to, you know, keep George in, in the, their prayers. Uh, I have a 10-year-old, Peter. And because we are football fans, we have a dog, and his name's Gipper. Oh, so yeah. and you just uh, blow some kisses right in there, big smacks. Good. Now we'll get to Roman. Yes. Roman, a little bit about you. Uh, I have, I've been a police officer for 11 or 18 years. Uh, I did some military service before and actually during that time. Um, and basically just uh, I don't have quite the the backdrop or anything that the sheriff has, but uh, just happy to be part of uh, law enforcement helping the communities. Now, do you have a significant somebody you want to blow a kiss to? I keep the kisses kind of, <laughs> we refrain from just everybody out there, just happy to see them and hope we can help out any way we can. Well, blow a big kiss right in there. That's good. Uh, now, maybe Sheriff, you can tell us, uh, I know that the Sheriff's Department, I want to make it clear, it's not the police department, it's a separate entity. Am I correct? There is a police component to the Sheriff's Department, but the Sheriff's Department is unique in the sense that uh, our historical roots go back before any other police agency. So there's one constitutionally mandated law enforcement agency, and that is the Sheriff. And so we have a, we have a police uh, component, we have a Highway Patrol Division, an investigation division. We have a lot of uh, statutory functions, including warrants and civil process, but we also run a jail and we incarcerate about a thousand people at any given point in time. Well, that's a, a big department. Now, I know in the department uh, there's a lot of different programs. And Roman, maybe you could uh, start us off and tell us about a couple of the programs. I know the one that you discussed with me before the show is tell them, I know it isn't a program of the Sheriff's Department, it's the Transportation Department, mm -hmm. but you do help them publicize it, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, basically the Sheriff's Office has individual programs and then we work in conjunction with different agencies to promote their programs as well. In this particular case, what you and I had talked about was the, uh, the Yellow Dot program, which is actually a, a program that's gone through the Illinois Department of Transportation. What it's intended to do is to, uh, as you have in your hand there, that's a description of it. It's strictly a yellow dot. Uh, it's a sticker. Uh, and what they're asking people to do is to affix that to their vehicle. And Would that be put on the windshield? The back window. It the cannot be in window. the front, yes, but okay. it has to be in the back. 
Um, and the purpose is, is that one of the things that's also is there's an information card. And that information card, the people that have the yellow dot would be able to write down all their information, who they are, their doctor's information, and medical information. So in the event that there's ever an emergency, police officers as well as the fire department and rescue, when they see the yellow dot, they know that in the glove box there's a card that has all the information they need to help that person. All right, now this is called the Yellow Dot Program. Now, if one of our viewers who is watching right now or they have a friend or a relative that they want to be made aware of this, how do they connect with this? Well, you can either go to the website, which is All the, right, let's talk mm -hmm. about what the website is. There's two. We actually link it with ours okay. at the sheriff's office, but the main one is the yellow dot Illinois.org, uh, and that's actually the program that advertises it and explains it all uh, uh -huh. from the Illinois Department of Transportation. Now, would there be a link on your website? Yes, ma'am, there would be. All right, so why don't you give the sheriff's department website? I believe it's uh, Lake County Sheriff uh, dot sheriff dot org, I believe. Dot org. So then they'd scroll down and there's probably, they could find the link, mm -hmm. right? Or put it in the search engine and it'll pull it up. Okay. So you've got that. And so that if you contact them, they'll tell you how to go about that. Then you could have this dot put on your back windshield and the information that anybody, if you're in an accident or something happens, knows that information is there. Now there's another program that uh, I think I'd like our sheriff uh, to go into a little bit, and it's the advocate, the senior advocate program. Certainly. We ha have approximately um, a dozen to 15 right now senior advocates, and they meet out at the um, permit center uh, or in... Uh, Where is the, the permit center? Uh, out in off Winchester Road, or they well, also... Winchester Road in Libertyville, right? Right. Yeah, they also meet out at the uh, emergency management, which is also uh, on uh, off Winchester R Road in in Libertyville, and they discuss uh, law enforcement issues with members from our staff. We have different members of the department brief uh -huh. them constantly, and then they're uh, liaisons for us in the community. They get out in the community, uh, they accompany us at. at Senior fairs, as you well aware, no, uh -huh. they're all throughout Lake County. Lake County is a big county, uh -huh. and they're with us at the fairs, uh, helping make seniors aware of the um, the Yellow Dot program, the Are You Okay, potential scams towards seniors, and uh, and on and on and on, so that seniors are abreast of what what's going on in law enforcement. Now, uh, if somebody is interested in being a part of this uh, advocate program, they could either call the sheriff's uh, department mm -hmm. or they could go to the website. We have uh, the website is listed uh, on the graphics and uh, they could contact. And also there is a general telephone number. Maybe it would be a good thing if we would give out that number. Do you happen to remember that number? I do. No oh, good. 847-377-4000. Okay, that's an easy number to remember. So uh, if you have didn't get all the information about the yellow dot or you're interested in this uh, advocate uh, program, and the advocate program is actually being the in-between person, that's what the liaison is, is an in-between person to help the sheriff's department get these out to, like, to different senior centers, like if you're the member of a senior center and if you'd like to have any of these programs or like to have your senior group find out about these programs because, you know, we're all in this together and in the world that we're living in, each one of us needs to do our part to hook the community because as a group of seniors, I know when I started the show 15 years ago, seniors were in the minority, but then with the baby boomers and everything coming in, now we're right in the mainstream because we're living so much longer because of technology and the advances in medicine. So what we need to do is keep our marbles going, keep those little gray cells going, and we each need to do our part 
and thankful that we live in an area and in a community that has these programs available for us. And they're not available just to sit there. They're available to be used. So what we have to know how to do is to get out and use them uh, for our benefit. Now, maybe you'd like to go into some other aspects. Uh, Roman, well, I think it's, we only have a little time left before I go into my commentary. So um, about how many programs are there? There's several, right? The Lake County Sheriff's Office has a lot of different programs that, um, you know, that, um, we make available. Um, you know, we mentioned the Are You OK? Yeah, we, Are You OK? I'm going to go after my, my commentary. I want to go into that. What is the Are You OK? program. But uh, if, if they call <clears throat> the general number, they can find out a listing of what all the programs are. And they can get there's several brochures available. Now it comes time for Vita's Pearls of Wisdom. And you know, I'm like your, your grandma or your Aunt Rose. You know, I'm always trying to give you details. In the holiday season, I want to tell you, I want to impress you with one thing. This happened to me 11 years ago. You know, I'm, I'm, you can tell I'm a Gabby sort. And so I'm always doing six things at one time. I'm baking and, and I'm cooking something and I'm climbing to get something on top of the uh, cabinet on top of my refrigerator. Well, 11 years ago, what I did is I got on my little step stool to reach some big aluminum foil for something I was baking. And the whole thing went out from under me. I flipped down on the floor, cracked my hip, and broke my femur in a hundred pieces, which I have a long plate in now. Now this is the just, you've, you've gone through with me on this whole thing. This is the just of what I'm getting at. What you need to do is you need to go through your house or your apartment. And at the bottom of every step stool and every ladder is a little uh, uh, rubber cast that's stuck on. Now what happened to me and I think it's just simply out of neglect in that I wasn't paying attention, is the rubber part broke off. So when I got up on the top stu uh, step, then there was just the metal, and the metal slipped, and the whole step stool went out from underneath me. So you need to go around your apartment and check at the bottom of your chairs, like if you have cast your chairs, if they're working right, if you have a step stool, if it has that little lover, lover, uh, rubber fix set at the bottom of it. And then you need to do another thing. If you have little tiny rugs and the rugs doesn't have a skid backing on it, bingo, you're going to do a fall. And so you need to check that out uh, uh, really good. And what another thing you need to do is so many falls happen of people getting up during the night to go to the bathroom and they don't have a night light. You need to put an, a night light that, and when you get out of bed, don't just get out of bed. Get out of bed, sit on the bed, and I may sound like an old fogey, but I'm giving you tips to keep you from falling, okay? Now, you sit on the edge of the bed, that you get your bearings, okay? And be sure you have a night light and that you're not gonna bump into something or slip on something and do a fall. Now, if you have any questions you wanna ask me over the holidays, you can go to my website, which is senioriswetc.org. Scroll down, I've got about 50 shows online. My telephone number is there and my email is vitaverden at netzero.net, okay? Now we're going to get back to these good lookers and we're going to get some more tips and information from them. So Roman, I'm coming to you and what is this OK program? Am I saying it right? The name of the program is Are You OK? Are You OK? Are You OK? We're going to find out about that now. 
It's a program that is available to everybody, uh, however it is utilized. It's not just seniors, yeah. it's available mm -hmm. to everyone. I'm going to make that clear. Okay. It is mostly used uh, from seniors, but the idea is, is that the Sheriff's Office will actually call you. If you sign up for the program, we uh -huh. actually will call you on a daily basis to make sure that everything's as the name is. Like a wellness mm -hmm. check? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that is really good. There's no cost involved in it. It's just people who want to participate in it. And uh, we have two ladies that predominantly do it at the Sheriff's Office that call you on a daily basis just to make sure you're okay. Oh, are you okay? Did you hear that? Now, are you okay? So the number is of the generals, is that where they call? Yes, ma'am. Let's give that number one more time. That's 847-377. Uh, 847-377. 4,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, what else is going on in, in the Sheriff's Department? that uh, is there, you know, like, um, we'd like to talk a little bit about all these fraud telephone calls. I'd like to get into that a little bit. You know, I've, I've heard like people are getting calls, seniors are getting calls. Maybe you can dip in on that. Sure, uh, we, we have a number of different scams going on. One of which is that um, a perpetrator will call the senior and claim to be the grandchild of the senior uh -huh. or claim to be someone calling on behalf of the grandchild of the senior will say that the grandchild is in jail that they need money to be bailed out or some other uh, like an need accident for money school what have you an accident and that uh, the bills have to be paid right away and can the money be wired to this source and then the perpetrator is able to get the, the, the funds so that's something that's going on. Obviously, we're still d dealing with uh, ruse burglaries and home repair scams. Now, how does that go? Essentially, you have a perpetrator that uh, tries to con his way into the senior's house. He'll come up to the door, ring the bell, and he'll claim, he or she will claim that they're there uh, from the power company, the electric company, or they're there because they have a skill to fix whatever needs to be fixed within the house. They get their way in and as soon as they're inside they start committing uh, burglary. So hmm. uh, it's a dangerous world out there. You know, we want to be aware. Some basic tips obviously, don't wire money to any source um, that, that uh, yes, uh, be careful with regards to emails that you receive. Now don't and the email, the email, that's a tricky thing because uh, if you open up, mm -hmm. if you open up anything that they have there, you could, you stand chance of getting a virus and they can get into you, right? Into your, they can hack into you. Right, exactly. So, you know, that's something that, um, you know, we, we caution against, you know, don't open emails from unknown sources. So from unknown sources, you know, what button you press, delete, delete, delete. And uh, is there anything else, uh, any other things that you'd like to talk about, Roman? Vita, it's very easy to prevent a lot of these crimes. Uh, if it's a valid email, you can always follow up on it yourself, just like when you get that phone call. The phone calls are intended to give you a shocking or a surprising response that would otherwise distract you and you inadvertently give information that you shouldn't. We often tell people that the simplest answer is just hang up. Don't give any information. Just hang up and then you can always call them back to verify that what you're actually hearing is correct. Uh, same thing with emails. Just delete it. Don't open anything and if it's something that is of, of importance you can contact the people you know your bank or whomever and they can verify that information for you. It's very easy to you know kind of protect yourself from these things. Uh -huh. Well, now, as uh, seniors, we are vulnerable because uh, we want to be helpful. But, like, on the computer, I know uh, I get, you know, at least a half a dozen every day that say I've either inherited something or, you know, that they're trying to uh, contact me. The last one I got is we found your name on a dating site. Hmm you know, are you interested, somebody that was 21 years old, you know, and uh, I'm sure that it was an accurate site, you know, I'm 82 mm -hmm. years old, so just delete that. But on the telephone, I think that uh, with some seniors are lonely and they have somebody to talk to, 
but I think it's a wise thing if they ask for a number that they could call back. Mm -hmm. That's a way of checking it. Yes. Now, I'd like to go into a little bit about more about the Sheriff's uh, Department. Uh, how long have you been with the Sheriff's Department, Sheriff? Well, I was elected Sheriff in 2006. Uh-huh. And reelected in 2010, and then reelected again in 2014. So I'm beginning my third term right now. So you must be doing something right if you're Thank in your you. third Appreciate term. It. Yeah. You know, so we're happy. You know that you've come in because uh, we. I've heard such good things about the sheriff's department, and in today's world, you know, it just breaks my heart. There's so many uh, assaults against. Uh, you know, the people who are defending our rights right now. And how about for you, Roman? I would like to go a little bit on that, on how long you've been in law well, enforcement. I was a police officer before I came to the Lake County Sheriff's Office uh, for about six years, and I've been here for about 12, coming up 13 now. Uh, oh, for a long time. Yes, I've been just under 18 years. And have you seen the changes that have happened within our society? Yes, ma'am, I have. Uh, there's a lot of, unfortunately, there's not a lot of opportunity for the communities and the police departments to, to kind of sit down and talk like we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that creates a little bit of distrust and some bad information that gets out to everyone. And so uh, the thing that uh, we're, you know, in the process of doing now is talking about mm -hmm. things. And hopefully, you know, with technology and, and television that to make people available if they want to discuss something with you and we have given out the numbers. Now I know uh, as as you said to, to start the show there's several departments. Now do you have a lot of things with drunk drivers over the Christmas holidays? We do. Drunk driving has been down um, you know nationally it's been down in Illinois and I think a lot of that is through effective public relations communication, that we've put the word out that law enforcement is out in full force, that if somebody's drinking and driving, that they are going to be caught, that uh, we're living in a world where nobody gets any breaks. There's essentially a no tolerance on, on drunk driving. And uh, the penalties have continued to go up and up in both the amount of uh, potential prison time, the loss of license, and the fines. So, well, that's you know, a good thing. It's a good deterrent, absolutely. It's all That's good. a good thing that exactly. it goes up like that. Um, uh, uh, not only with that, how about, uh, do you see much that bullying on the road? You, you see some of that, um, uh, you know, rage uh, road where- Ro Road yeah, rage. Road rage we're uh, cutting people off and what have you. We had an incident of that not too long ago on, on 137 and one on uh, St. Mary's Road. And um, you, we're living in a world, you, you kind of touched on this earlier, it's a toxic world, a lot of angry people, um, and it shows itself in, on the road sometimes. And I think that the more that we can connect uh, our law enforcement with the public, if we can make these connections, because we're living in, in a, such a wide range world with technology that uh, we have to get back to some basics. That's how I see it, connecting. Like, I know when I was raised, you know, it was like hometown, you knew everybody in your neighborhood, you knew, you knew all the policemen, you, you knew all of them, but now we're living in a different world. And so there's different sets of circumstances. But I think that technology can help us if we use it in the proper way. And we have discussions about things and have different groups on. Now, we've gone through the transportation. What are some of the other uh, areas that you have programs in? I want to get them across the board, touch in on each one of them. Right. So we have a lot of jail programming. Oh, just talk <clears throat> about that for a minute. Sure. Um, nationally and even in Illinois, recidivism rates, and that's the rate of people that return within a period of time to prison that have been released and returned, uh -huh. usually it's measured within two years, uh -huh. is about two-thirds. 
So we're trying to impact that through the programming that we have. We have approximately 500 people each year that come into the jail as volunteers that uh, help the inmates, help them uh, in, in terms of job skills, in terms of... Um, oh, to train them for when they get out. Right, exactly, in, in terms of parenting skills. And, oh. you know, oftentimes uh, they come in also f from a faith perspective because, you know, that's very important. If they lack any type of morality, they're going to find uh -huh. the foundation for that in their faith. So uh -huh. we, we welcome these volunteers. Great things are happening in the Lake County Jail in terms of uh, helping these people uh, learn some skill sets that they didn't have before, give them some hope, uh -huh. and as a result of that, our uh, recidivism rates are down. So uh -huh. we're, we're very proud of that. Um, other programming we have, we have uh, we're, we're in the schools all the time. If seniors out there are interested and they belong to a larger senior group and they want to have somebody come in and put on a PowerPoint presentation, you know, with some detail as to potential scams. Roman's doing that all the time. Uh, he and I go to many of these functions together. So that could be like for schools or for senior centers or just groups, different exactly. groups of we'll people. We'll tailor it for what you want. Okay, so the telephone number, and they have access to all of it. Okay, we're coming down to the end now. Uh, what I'd like you to both individually look in the camera and say, where does your passion lie? What benefit are you getting, and what have you learned on your job? Where does your passion lie? What kind of... Right. So, you know, I believe that public service and law enforcement is a calling. Uh -huh. and, you know, it's, it's something that we... That, discern from uh, God above. I do too. And I've been in this business a long time. I started as a state's attorney more than about 25 years ago. I was an assistant attorney general supervisor. I was a U.S. attorney, uh, special assistant U.S. attorney. And I've been a sheriff for a long time as well. And uh, I get satisfaction from knowing that we're making a difference, that uh, we're, we're helping to ensure that people don't come back into the system, the prison system, and that the community is safer. You know, that ultimately that you can rest at night knowing that Lake County is far different than what's going on in Chicago. That's true. And how about for you, Roman? Personal satisfaction that you're helping somebody who needs it. Um, you know, law enforcement or public service as a whole is, is always a, a constant balance of what the community may necessarily want, to what they need, and what you can provide. Uh, the only peace of mind that I get out of it is that at the end of the day, uh, regardless of how things go, I know that I've done my part. Uh, what, what I can do within my power to help the people that I can serve. Well, you know, I feel the same way. I know when I started 15 years ago, I said, this is fun, and I'm learning something. I said, the day that it's a strain, I'm out of here. And here we are 15 years later, and it's still fun, and I still feel connected. And you know what? It's because of you. It's because of you out there that this show is still alive. And we're so happy about that because you have kept us going and you have contacted me and you have sent me emails. I've gotten letters. You've called me on the phone and you told me what, we, what you wanted and what we're doing is bringing it to you. So we're just looking forward to the future. And, you know, I, the whole staff here at Senior Issues, et cetera, wishes you a very Merry Christmas and a happy new year and when you come to the end of the year rope you know what you do you tie a knot and you hang on and you know why because the best is yet to come god bless you we love you